Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to be going over the deep stat tool, how I use it, and what I use it for. Ever since I started ramping up the amount of work I do, I'm always looking for ways to be able to save time and effort. Not only that, but there are many people in our members area, shout out to you, from Caleb, from Lovely Hernandez, to a whole bunch of other people who have requested, whether publicly or private, to do more content on this tool. Uh, I've made probably one video on this tool like three, four months ago or something like that. And, uh, you know, people were more curious. They wanted to learn about it. So I'll show you how I use it. And for those who don't know, I'm, I always been a proponent of utilizing different tools for, uh, you know, print on demand, T public, Redbubble, Etsy, things like that. And so this is kind of one of those tools that it's like all inclusive. It has a, a bunch of different tools in it. Uh, from KDP stuff to T public stuff to be able to help you. Um, so let me just sign in really quickly and uh, we'll, I'll get you guys going. I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so here is the login. I'll just go ahead and log in privately. You just enter your license key and your email, very similar to a lot of the other print on demand tools that I've shown in my YouTube channel before. And I'll leave a link in the description where you can get this tool if you want to use it. A little alert, interruption alert for this video. You can go ahead and join our free members area below. Obviously, we do have a paid members area, but I created a free members area as well just for daily motivation, daily tips and tricks to make more money, and of course, ways that we can communicate with each other. Also, leave a comment down below so that you can be entered in the random giveaway that we do for every single video. From now on, so what this tool is based on is it's based on basically everything print on demand, right? I told you Zazzle, Etsy, KDP, which if you consider KDP print on demand, it's like print on demand books, right? Technically, but really, if you really think about all this, what is it truly? It's truly owning a small piece of digital real estate on the internet. I've been saying this for years. Another print on demand YouTuber who says this is Ryan Hogue. Shout out to him. The whole concept of doing print on demand, for me, I keep it very, very simple, especially when we're talking about marketplaces like Redbubble, TeePublic, Etsy. The beautiful thing about these platforms is that they are marketplaces, meaning attention already gravitates to these platforms. So what we have to do is what we just for print on demand is figure out what do people gravitate to naturally, create designs for those desires or those needs, and then sit back and enjoy the profits. Now, that's an oversimplification, right? There's some research that goes into it, some design skill that goes into it. But generally, that's how print-on-demand works. And if this is your first time getting into print-on-demand, right? If you've never done print-on-demand before, or if you've seen any of my print-on-demand videos, it's really that simple. And the truth is, is that there's nothing extra that you have to do. In the beginning of your print-on-demand journey, you might find things that somewhat seem difficult. I'm not going to lie, because... You're starting from scratch, you've never built anything before, but literally day after day after day, the more you build your print on demand accounts, you could think of them like portfolios or achievements like a video game. The more you do, the better you get day in and day out. So let me show you what you could do here. So let's click on Redbubble for example. With Redbubble you have a tag generator tool, a silent trend research tool, and a low competition niche tool. Okay. That's the same for the T public tool as well. So you have tag generators, silent trend search, and a low competition. I personally love the most the silent trend search tool. Why? I'm not looking for the biggest niches out there, right? I'm not interested in finding the niche that gets all the attention. What my, I guess you could say, position is, whenever I do print on demand, is I look at the thing objectively. I say, okay. This might be getting a lot of desire, but it also has a lot of competition. It might be hard for me to stand out. So that's exactly what these kind of tools do. They help you find these trends or these niches that have this desire, have a, a, a desire, but it's quiet. It, there's not much demand for it. And that's kind of the way I explain it. But essentially, this tool, this deep stat tool, the way it works is it engages with what's currently on the, those current websites. So redbubble.com if I type in a keyword here like for example for the tag generator if I type in a keyword like cat 
it's going to search what are the current results for cat. Now, personally, I wouldn't do that. And it's not going to just, by the way, I want to be clear, it's not going to just spit out um, the results that exist there. It's going to nominate certain keywords based on certain criteria that they have set that are ideal for us creators. Now, the thing that's important to realize here is that it's interacting with the current website, but it's also using its AI engine to think through and process things. Now, I got a question about chat GPT and somebody said, I think it was Caleb in the members area, or it could have been someone else, but if I made a mistake, shout out to you, I apologize. He said, can I use the, um, or he was saying, which one is better, the deep stat tool or deep research and web search here on uh, chat GPT? If you notice here, I pretty much never use this deep research button here for print on demand. And I'll tell you why. The deep research chat GPT tool is a phenomenal tool. Don't get me wrong. But in the case of print on demand, guys, print on demand is one of those things that we have to, it's marketplace dependent. And unfortunately, what this is great for, it's great for answering questions. So things like search volumes, it doesn't take into consideration. It doesn't take into consideration competition values, how many designs that exist. If I sat here and asked it, hey, can you give me the best tags for this design? You have to remember that ChatGPT is what? It's a predictive tool. Those who don't know these language learning models, they first take in data from the internet, a lot of data, a lot of data, a lot of data, and they just predict what is the next thing to say. That's essentially how it works. That's why they're able to work. You should actually research the science behind it. It's actually pretty, pretty interesting. But for print on demand, guys, we're not trying to predict, you know, words for tags or anything like that, because what are we doing? We're trying to research things that are lower competition, effectively things that are out of the way. If you can create these designs that are lower competition, specifically around the keywords that, that they're structured with, then you found yourself in a niche opportunity that can make you more money. Anybody who's made money on print on demand before understand that there's two really ways to do it. The first way is to be a sniper and to hunt and to look for those specific niches. The second way is to have a shotgun approach where you're just shooting as much at the wall as possible. You're creating hundreds and thousands of designs on a weekly basis and you're just waiting for what sells. Both are very, very workable methods, but some people don't have all the time in the day and not on uh, also not to mention that what strategy is that ideal for merch by amazon if you're familiar with merch by amazon what people do is they have tiers like a tier system and with merch by amazon the interesting thing about it is you start off at that 10 tier right like you can upload 10 different designs and or 10 products and that's it then after a while, you know, things go up, you go from 100, 500, etc. And some people go even way past that. But th there's only one problem with that, right? When you get to a high enough tier, you might have a daily upload limit of like, let's say 200, 500, 1000 uploads a day. Now, where does that become a problem? Well, you're going to need some sort of automation. Now, all of a sudden, your strategy doesn't go from the sniper method anymore but it goes to the shotgun approach where you're just doing as much as possible. And once again, there's nothing wrong with that. Different strategies work for different folks. But regardless, if you're the type of person where you don't have all the time in the day, every resource counts, and on top of that, you need to be able to do your research and find the right design to sell, this tool is gonna help you do that. So let's kind of look into things here. Let's use something like Redbubble, super simple. Okay, we go to the tag generator here, and we find a niche that's a little bit more competitive. I'm gonna show you how I would do it. So first guys, let's go to Redbubble together. We don't wanna just think of an idea. We have to have an idea kind of researched before we just think of a generalized niche. So I'll go to Redbubble real quick and let's do some basic search. So let's type in an apple, okay? Basic. So right off the bat, one niche that I see here is the apple, big apple, New York. What are three keywords right there? We have New York, we have Big Apple or The Big Apple, and we have just Apple. Those are three different things that mean three different things, but in some sort of way they're interconnected by what? By concept. 
well, let's do some research if we could find some keywords that are potentially beneficial to us, right? When we do maybe create a the big apple design. So I could search here the big apple, okay, and just leave that there and see if there's anything that's interesting. Okay, so the Big Apple references New York, but specifically New York City. Um, and you could see here, you got the bridge, you got the um, the uh, the statue here, and and you know that's essentially what it is. So just looking at these, I might not necessarily think of certain ideas. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test things out. I'm going to go into the software, and I'm going to say, okay, is there some sort of idea? That could potentially come to me that's out of left field that could potentially be lower competition but have some search demand to be able to make me some money so I go over here and I'll type in the big Apple now for niche I might type in something like travel uh, tourist and then I might type in New York City okay now for the style my style, let's just say, might be a cartoon, cute style, all right? Now, why are we typing things in like this, right? Pretty generalized. It's because this has an AI engine that could think through what I'm looking at. So when it does its search for the Big Apple on Redbubble, it's going to scan it the same way a normal human would. It's going to look at things just like any person would, and it's going to nominate certain things, learn from their tags, see if there's any low competition markers, and jump into things. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to hit search, and we'll wait and see for different results. Now, depending on the niche, depending on the niche, it might take some time to do a search, right? Every niche is a little bit different, but here we have a set of keywords. Now, I haven't looked through these keywords just yet, but there are some keywords here that I would never use, and then there's some keywords that I would use. Remember, it's pulling data from all the different designs that are tourist, travel, New York City based, cartoon, and cute, that also include the main keyword, the Big Apple, in its title, its, its uh, tags, things like that. So that's essentially what this is doing right now. So I'll look at this, and like I said, there's some keywords I personally would not use. Just because they sit here doesn't mean I need to use them. But there might be some ideas that come out of it. So, for example, we have the word New York Skyline, all right? New York Skyline, that may be, might be an interesting keyword, maybe not for a tag on one of my designs, but it might help me find my next niche that's lower competition. And sometimes, depending on my original thought, when I search a keyword like the Big Apple, right? Depending on my thought, guys, I might be thinking in the wrong direction. I might have to go in a completely different niche. So the proper way to use this tool, guys, is to work through the process. Think of different examples of, tool, of keywords that you would not use. Think of different keywords that you would use. Think of different niches that you would target. And do a deeper search that way, okay? And the reason why is because you want to find, like I said, those low competition keywords. Not every single time that you research are you going to find something that works for you. Now, we could sit here, go through these keywords and think about it. But at the end of the day, this YouTube video is going to be like four hours long if we went through every keyword, did a full analysis. But we can look at things like competition here. See, there's some keywords that we don't even have to search on Redbubble for. But they give us the data here. Now, you guys can go through this individually, but you can see all the different competition markers. And you could see if it's low competition or high competition. And depending on if it's low or high competition, we want to compare also the search volumes, right? So you have medium search volume tags, you have high search volume tags, and you have low search volume tags. It wouldn't be logical for me to go to a low search volume tag and then go for something that's high competition. That wouldn't make sense at all. Does that make sense? So the whole point here is it's about picking the perfect keyword. Let's try this in a different fashion. Let's say we look into the niche of Switzerland. Let's type in Switzerland on Google here. The great country of Switzerland. There's probably some people who, uh, you know, live in Zurich, Switzerland that maybe they visited, maybe they just want to buy some Zurich merch. So I might type in here, 
Zurich, Switzerland. Now, I'm going to type things the exact same way I would type things into Redbubble. This is like a little tip that a lot of people are not aware of. I'm going to type it exactly the way that I would type it into Redbubble. Not like this, right? Not with the uh, the little character thing here. So I'm just going to type in Zurich, and then I'm going to type in Switzerland, and I'm going to type in travel. Tur Let's write tourism here. Tourism. And I'm just going to write text based design something like that okay and I'm going to type in yeah just text based design and I'll hit generate so what am I doing here I'm telling you to look for text based designs that are all about tourism for Zurich Switzerland and so here we have all kinds of different keywords for example Lake Zurich see Lake Zurich wasn't th something that I thought of creating for but maybe it's low competition enough that creates a perfect avenue for me to create a design in, right? I would actually have to have some background knowledge about Zurich to be able to create a Lake Zurich design, but now because I have this tool, it kind of handled that part for me. And for it to come up in the tags, that might mean that it's extremely valuable for me. So I'll go onto Redbubble and I'll do a search for Lake Zurich, just like this, okay? And I'll search for it. And look at this, guys. There's not that much competition around it. I mean, the sec I typed in Lake Zurich, but let's be honest. We have a regular Zurich design. We have a Switzerland flag here. So I'm seeing here that there is generally a lower competition. We have one here, one here. Um, now, it might be the Zurich of Illinois because I just noticed it says Illinois here. But hey, it's still a keyword that is going to be profitable. And sorry if I don't have too much... Um, I don't know, geology knowledge, whether it's in Switzerland or whether it's in Illinois, who really knows? But the point is, is that the keywords have connected some way that AI figured out that this is a val valuable keyword. And if I was a smart individual, I would go out here and create a design specifically for this keyword. And then from there, I would just move on to the next design. So that's exactly how you would run a profitable print on demand business with DeepStat. And guys, don't get me wrong, you can do this with, you know, manually, it's just a lot more work. And me personally, I'm a big fan of saving time, money, and effort. Because the more effort and time that I can save, the more money I can make. I can deploy my resources to other things, and I can allow myself to create a diversified approach to making more money online. So you can do this with all kinds of different platforms here, from eBay to KDP to merch by Amazon, I mean, all kinds, Etsy, uh, I mean, you look at it, you can find it, you can do it. If you have questions, if you want to see more content using this software, let me know. Um, like I said, this is not something I normally do because I usually make videos around concepts, ideas, uh, but if you want me to click create more, you know, click-by-click -click tutorials just like this one, I'll be happy to do so for you. Let me know in the comments down below. It's been a while since I made a video like this. I think, like I said, specifically on this tool, maybe three, four months ago. Who really knows? Maybe even longer, to be 100% honest with you. But yeah, if you have questions, put them in the comments down below. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for watching, and peace out. Bye.